Wow, I was just absolutely thoroughly impressed. Hey, what's up guys, it's Josh here. Today I wanna to do a review on all five Daniel Craig James Bond films ranked. Now I did a review, I think last year, where I watched and reviewed all of the James Bond films. So part of, or at least most of what's influencing me to make this list is comparing the Daniel Craig James Bond films to the original films. And although I liked almost all of Daniel Craig's films, at least to a certain extent, um, this is the one time where my list is just completely unlike anybody else's. So if you disagree, you know, feel free to tell me down below. Everybody has their own opinion. And this is one of those times I'm just gonna be pissing people off. I can already tell. So number five, my least favorite Daniel Craig James Bond is Casino Royale, and a lot of people will put this as number one, if not number two. Casino Royale was so, so difficult for me to rewatch. It is very unlike any of the other James Bond films. I would say James is probably his weakest in this one. And this is supposed to be the origin story where, where he gets his heart broken and he actually trusts and we see him as a weaker version of himself. But there's just not much entertaining about this movie, at least for me, because James is always one step behind. I would say the opening scene and the end scene, James is actually himself. You know, he's winning, he's on top of things. And that's basically how a James Bond movie is. It's like he, he comes against Ed Adversity, he wins by the end of the film, that's it. Casino Royale was completely the opposite of that. He ends up having to slow down so much for the girl, spend so much time on her. And then on top of that, she ends up betraying him because she's one step ahead of him. It's like, I'm watching James Bond, not Vesper. So I just really just didn't like this movie. Yes, it has great scenes, like when he almost gets knocked out of the table and then he wins, but I mean, that means nothing because then a second later he's getting tortured and then Vesper, you know, helps out and then stops the torturing. It just, everything's out of his hands. I really didn't like this movie. So number five, Casino Royale. All right, guys, number four. I know you guys are going to hate me for this one, but Skyfall. Now, Skyfall, in a lot of aspects, it's a really well done film. But again, it just does not feel like a James Bond film. This is kind of like a send off to M. And then the main villain here, I love him as a villain, but in my opinion, we got almost no scenes with him and James. Like there's the one scene where he is supposed to shoot a gun by some girl and the girl dies. That scene is really good. That's when they first get introduced. I'm not gonna lie, that's really good. There was another point where like there's some smoke and they start shooting at each other. But besides that, that's all the good scenes we get of James and him, in my opinion. There's just nothing else that's juicy. And then the last part of the film, it's like we go back to James's original house out in the boonies. James Bond isn't going to an old house and using a bunch of rickety stuff to beat people. He's never been like that. You know, it's just not James Bond. So although I did like parts of Skyfall, I just really could not get into it. So number four, Skyfall. All right, guys, number three, and that is Quantum of Solace. Now, I know a lot of people hate this movie, but for what I want in a James Bond, I really, really liked it. He's essentially ahead of everybody the whole time. He's super aggressive. You know, he has some of like, I think the most intense or brutal kill that I've seen in all of James Bond is in this one. He's just heartless, he's great. And the kind of like the idea of this movie is he's so heartless, he's making mistakes. And by the end, he kind of becomes more of a balanced James Bonds, you know what I mean? So I think this is the shortest film, so it's just so easy to watch. And then they talk badly about, you know, the villain in this one. He's basically like trying to stop a water flow from getting to a city so he can charge them for the water because he's gonna block it and then he's gonna basically charge that city to give them the water. I think that's a great idea. I mean, it wasn't the greatest movie ever, but I like easy to watch. I like classic James Bond. And yes, there was some issues with it. There's the jump cuts, which didn't bother me that much, but I understand they bother some other people. Overall, this movie was so, so easy for me to watch. And I just really, I, got, I liked it. I liked it number three, Quantum of Solace. All right, guys, number two. And it's so, it's so weird because I didn't like this when I first saw it, but comparing it to all the other James Bond films, I would have to say Spectre. Now, Spectre is probably the closest Daniel Craig film to the classic idea of James Bond. I think this is the first Bond film where he has, I think, multiple gadgets, which 
were not in the first three movies, which I you could kind of give or take, you know what I mean? But I like classic James Bond. There's ways to realistically incorporate gadgets here and they do it. They do it as well in um, No Time to Die. Yeah, this one just feels the most like James Bond. So I had no idea that there was a Blofeld and because I'd only seen, I had only seen Austin Powers where there was Dr. Evil. So I had no idea that there was an actual character in James Bond that looks like Dr. Evil. I had no idea. I ended up rewatching all the James Bonds. So obviously I figured that out. And his name is like Blofeld. He's like, and I think he's in, what is that movie? He's in, you only live twice. And it's, Loomis from Halloween, which is just crazy, you know what I mean? So they tie that in to Spectre as well. You know what I mean? You bring Blofeld back and he's um, he's that really, really good actor. I forget his name. Yes, it, it, nothing, it doesn't really hit fully. There are some issues that I didn't like about it, but it was so James Bondy. It had so many throwbacks to what I liked about the original James Bonds that, you know, to me, I just had to put it as number two, especially because I rewatched all the James Bonds, but that's just me. On to number one. And before I even say this, I feel like the jump from these last movies to the first movies is enormous. When I put all the Daniel Craig movies in my James Bond ranking, they were all back to back to back. So I felt very similarly about those. I didn't feel like, oh, one's near the front and one's near the back. No, I felt like they were all pretty much the same. However, No Time to Die, huge jump forward as far as how much I like it more than the rest of the movies. Like this movie actually really invokes some serious emotions, at least for me. I know there's so many other things about this movie that they, they're kind of like first time things, kind of weird. I could see why people don't like it, but I have just never been so impressed with a James Bond film. Like I could, re I rewatched the ending, I think two or three or four times and it still hits. It's probably the most, you know, emotional ending of any James Bond. And I can see why people don't like it. Trust me, I totally get why. I was just absolutely blown away how much I felt in this movie. I mean, especially uh, Casino Royale. I feel like they liked Casino Royale because he had a very good relationship with Vesper and I totally get that. And if it had ended a different way, I probably would have been on board with it. But I, it was so hard for me to get on board with it because she ends up betraying him and killing herself. I just wasn't into it. I'm sorry, you know what I mean? But this one, Wow, I was just absolutely thoroughly impressed. And then when they were talking about replacing 007, I was just like, man, that's like the dumbest idea that's never gonna work. But the person that they replace him with, I'm like, wow. You know, I still don't know if it's gonna be as good as like the normal James Bonds, but I'm very, very impressed by the actress that they chose. They kind of upped the scales. They, they add kind of like a daughter element and then also like um, a wife that transfers over from, from last movie to this movie. Um, this movie's just got so many emotional scenes with it. And then to be honest, what sells the scenes is that actress. Like to be honest, it's all her. She sells all the scenes, like when she sells the train scene, um, when he's taking all the bullets in the car and he just stares at her and she's like crying. So anyways, guys, No Time to Die, number one, and it is a huge leap forward versus the other four for me. Let me know what your favorites are down below. And I understand a lot of people aren't gonna agree with me, so feel free to just put your five down below. I'd be very interested to see. I felt like it was better to do this than to do a whole another James Bond ranking. So anyways, guys, we're on the road to 50,000 subscribers. I couldn't do it without any of you guys' help. You guys are the best. I'm having a great day out here. Hopefully having a great day at home. See you all in the next video. Peace.